There's a few kind of offers that you're just basically incapable of saying no to. One of those is whenever Ferrari calls and says, would you like to drive our latest supercar slash hypercar? In this case, the SF90. Got the call and was like, absolutely, we'll be right there. We're heading over right now to Scuderia Ferrari Monaco and we're gonna see you know, what exactly is gonna happen, but I believe I'm gonna drive the SF90, but you know what? Whether I'm passenger for one minute or drive it for 30 seconds, whatever it may be, it's a brand new Ferrari and I'm very excited of whatever happens. We're gonna see what happens, but we're gonna to learn together as well. We're about to arrive at the dealership and I think they're gonna tell us a few things about the car. I think I already know which one it is, like the spec. I think it's a red car with a black um, roof and it's got the Assetto Corsa package, which makes it um, just better and much more expensive. Yeah, let's go to the dealership and we're gonna basically discover this thing together. And we're starting in a quite humble way in the Renault Twizy, of course, but this is the best car to get around Monaco and also great for filming. Bonjour. Wow. I think it's the Novitech or it's something, some sort. Pas mal. This is the beast, SF90. Okay, we're gonna hop in, drive out of town a little bit and then see how we do. We're creating a bit of traffic. Okay, right, well I'll see you guys up in La Turbie. Listen. Wow, it's electric, so it's on. Right, so the thing with this is it kind of falls in the hypercar category, kind of. I think it completely falls in the hypercar category, uh, which means it creates such a shit show, basically, when you're in town, everyone trying to take photos. We took it out of town, and then now we're going to properly drive it. I drove it up here and was kind of getting to learn a bit about the car because there's a lot to take in. Your brain doesn't quite fathom exactly what's going on. This is the latest, greatest, and fastest ever Ferrari produced. It's the SF90. It has just under a thousand horsepower, 780 from a twin turbo V8, which is in the back. And it's got three little electric engines giving it approximately 220 horsepower. I'll show you all of the different driving modes and stuff. Try and remember it all because as I say, there's a ton to take in. This one's got the Assetto Fiorano uh, pack, which adds hundred grand to the price and gives you things like carbon fiber wheels, it gives you the Assetto Fiorano door step sill there. And on the rear wing, which is also active, it gives you carbon fiber here. Is it worth that much money? I'll let you debate in the comments. It's got carbon fiber all over the place, the rear diffuser, there's so much to take in design wise. But it's also kind of the, the, I think the design language of this will trickle down into future Ferrari models. For example, ditching the circular lights in the back and having these uh, more rectangular shaped ones. And also I'll show you some stuff on the interior, that's where you see a lot. The V8 is all the way down there. It's so low, it's kind of similar to McLaren in that way, that how they've just put it all the way down to keep the center of gravity really low. You've also got two caps here, one electric, one for the fuel. And yeah, it's just an absolute beast. So I mean, a huge thank you to Ferrari and Belco for organizing this. I'm gonna put all the Instagrams you need. This is just like, and thank you to you guys for supporting the channel because being able to live these kinds of experiences uh, is just insane. So hop inside and then we're literally just gonna take it straight for a drive. Okay, so we're inside. Now then, look, talking about design language, it's gonna come onto another car. The door handle, well door button now, that is also seen on the Roma and I think that's gonna end up on all other um, Ferrari models. So let me point the, put this four point harness on 
So you see right now everything's kind of dark, but as soon as you put the ignition on, boom, everything lights up, it goes full spaceship mode, makes all sorts of noises. And you've got all these touch screens around. So here to do things like adjust your mirrors, it's all done through a touch screen. You can access your various cameras and things like that, which are placed around the car. Air conditioning controlled right here. And you've got the classic um, Ferrari passenger display, which looks really, really cool. So you can do audio, navigation, everything. Really nice. And the way they've kind of brought in this new design language, like in the Roma, for example, this old school kind of makeshift gated gearbox to control things like your launch control, manual, auto, and reverse. This is really, really cool. And I think this is something we're gonna see a lot more. And I love the way they've done that. Feels very spacious, very airy. New seats as well. Again, maybe we'll see these more because the Ferrari seats have remained in the same design for ages. But it's kind of kept that Ferrari essence. For example, even the mirror is being controlled from the middle whilst bringing along the new technology. Now the main kind of shock that you see in front of you is this huge digital dash, which looks really cool. And you can put it in max view, it's called, which is very futuristic. And look at the size of that. You can get your map or various things, I think, on there. Um, so it's very, very cool the way, you know, Ferrari, which are mainly just a performance um, company, have also brought in all the technology and they're kind of high end in every regard now, which is awesome. Steering wheel for the first time ever, the Manatino is digital. So you go, you know, sport, race, CT off, everything off, which we're not going to do today because it is not my car. And then for the first time also, the start button is, is a touchscreen there. Now, that little noise it just made shows that the car's actually started. So now if I put it into gear, boom, we're moving forward. And you will notice that it is not making any noise, which is so weird. Okay, how weird does this feel? And how futuristic does it sound? We've got the Twizy behind and it's weird to think that we're both driving in fully electric. So in fully electric, you can go up to 130 kilometers an hour, I believe for a range of around 80 kilometers. And right now I am in hybrid mode, which means when I want it, the petrol engine will kick in. But right here, I can go between different modes. So for example, I can click electric drive and now, no matter how hard I accelerate, it's going to be fully electric. So that's really cool to be able to see and really cool also like feeling it still accelerates really hard. Then you can go hybrid, which as I say, is where if you want it, if I accelerate hard, all of a sudden the petrol engine will come into play. Or I can go fully petrol engine, which feels awesome and manual mode. It's a very particular driving experience because you've got that combination of the electric power and the petrol engine. So when you're in hybrid, for example, it's kind of cutting in and out of fully electric, which takes some getting used to. Like earlier when we were driving, when you go around the hairpin, it'll go fully electric. And then when you accelerate out, the petrol engine will come in and it does take some getting used to, but I mean, how weird does this feel? You're driving a Ferrari and it's not making any noise. But the road presence this thing has, I wasn't convinced when I saw the first photos of it, but seeing it in real, it looks crazy, but also just the way people react to it is nuts. So driving through town, look, look how social is this? Me who's usually coming through in my straight pipe scuderia, being able to come through and not make any noise, not bother anybody, feels surreal. I bet you all these people are also wondering, what the hell, why is that car not making any noise? Anyways, it is very wide. And as I say, there is carbon all over the place and carbon fiber wheels. Obviously classic Ferrari, you've got your indicators on the steering wheel. God, it makes such a weird noise. It sounds like a mosquito. A twizzy, basically. It basically sounds like a twizzy, yeah. So I guess this is how a lot of people are gonna use it, right? Driving through town, you're gonna be in full electric like this. And then as soon as we get onto that road up there, I'm gonna whack it, the petrol engine on and we're good to go. Because then you, you can put it into manual. The paddles are that classic kind of really chunky, thick carbon fiber feeling Ferrari paddle, which is unbelievable. And I had a chance to basically accelerate a little bit on our way up here. And I think this may be the fastest car I've ever driven. So now that we get onto this road, on comes the engine into manual mode. And you get that noise, which, yes, granted, is not like a LaFerrari or anything like that. It's that kind of new 
Ferrari Turbo V8 sound we're getting used to hearing. So it's not quite as shouty as maybe one would hope, but you have to make sacrifices in some places. Like for example, one of the reasons they didn't put butterfly doors is I think to keep some stuff in reserve for the replacement La Ferrari. Because this comes in, I mean, it is a hugely expensive car, but if you look at the performance of this and where it sits in the market and its price, compared to other cars like the LaFerrari, like the P1, like the 918, which offer similar experiences and performance, this starts at 450,000 euros, which is much less than all those others where you're not going to find any for under a million euros. So that's already kind of interesting. The Assetto Fiorano pack does add about 100,000 euros to the price, which is fairly aggressive for a lot of carbon. But nevertheless, that's the way it is. Jeez. It's absurd. It is absolutely absurd, the acceleration. We're obviously barely going to be able to get much of the experience of this car because we are on public roads and I think I've barely even gone 50% on the acceleration and it's already so unbelievably fast I mean a thousand horsepower but also four-wheel drive so it really manages to put the power down now I hope the camera is not going to be too shaky all over the place but when you've got this kind of power a, it's hard to resist accelerating, and B, I imagine it's even harder probably to hold the camera. So we're driving up to a little viewpoint. It should be a little straightaway now. Where we should be able to accelerate a bit. Oh my God. I mean, it doesn't, oh, it doesn't feel like anything else. It just completely, completely glues you to the seat. I feel like my stomach is kind of in the third cylinder of the engine now. It just, oh, it's unreal. It, it kind of has that McLaren 720S um, feeling of invincibility. Like it just grips, it accelerates, it changes gear perfectly, but it's like a 720S turned up to 12 or 13. Unreal. And. It still remains kind of not too intimidating and easy to drive and I'm not going to use the word chuckable but it feels like you know it's not inaccessible like maybe some of the slightly more old school supercars and hypercars. This feels somewhat accessible which is a terrifying concept but the fact that you can have a thousand horsepower all this technology and still a fairly compliant ride and it manages to put that power down <laughs> the camera, I can just see the camera flying, is insane. Because before you either had the power, you either had the comfort, you either had the technology, but there was no way you were going to get all of them. I mean, I'm on winter tires, so I need to be a bit careful. But, oh. Oh my God. Mate. It is a spaceship. It is, oh, I think it's the fastest car I've ever driven. Jesus, I don't even know what to say. The road here is always a bit damp, but we can give it unbelievable. Now obviously, it's not the longest of drives. Guys, look, we've come up to this beautiful viewpoint. The sun's going down. It's about to be the curfew here. So unfortunately we can't keep filming. I would love to keep filming for hours and hours with this car for you guys. But what a, a surreal moment. I mean, be lucky enough to drive a car like this. Also look, look at the Porsche, by the way, we just happened to be here. But being able to yeah, get given the opportunity to drive cars like this is, is unreal. So yeah, I feel very, very lucky and just a huge, huge, huge amount of respect for this car. That's all I can say. It's, it's like one of those cars that leaves you in awe. And uh, I wasn't sure I was, I'm really gonna fall for it but it is unbelievable so um yeah great great experience hope you enjoyed this subscribe if you haven't already and we'll be plaque we'll be plaque we'll be back with plenty of videos of this type very soon cheers guys bye bye